Hello viewers, welcome again to the MOOC course Internet of Things Design Concepts and Use Cases. In this video, we are going to learn about the security and privacy concerns in IoT. Now, let us see that why security is needed. For example, there is a, a lock in your door and we have in the mobile app, we have some application where we can unlock and lock the door. Now, if you are clicking on the unlock that automatically your lock will be opened. Now, if you see that where is the security, if anybody uh, uh, gets your mobile and if anybody hacks your mobile and he has this application, so anybody can open the lock at your home without your concern and finally it may get some you know issues at your home. Similarly, whatever we are using the wearable devices, that is devices that are collecting large amount of data that can capture your actions, your location throughout the day, you do not exactly know that where this data is going, right? Anybody can hack those data and can use those information. So, there are some security issues in IoT. As per reports of Open uh, Web Application Security Project, IoT security is challenged by constrained resources, limited computational power, usage of insecure operating system, insufficient authentication and authorization, and lack of transport encryption, etc. Now, one by one we will discuss that includes that insufficient testing and updating. Currently, there are nearly 40 billion IoT connected devices worldwide is there and this number will increase up to 60 billion by the end of 2025. And one of the main problems with tech companies building these devices is that they are too careless when it comes to handling the device related security risk. They are actually, they do not give enough updates and sometimes they do not get updates at all. Right? This means a device that was once thought of as secure when the customers first bought, it becomes insecure in, uh, in the next days or next years. IoT manufacturers, however, they are more eager to produce more and more and deliver more and more as fast as possible to the customers. Right? They do not think about the security. Unfortunately, most manufacturers offer the firmware updates that is third party updates, right? Sometimes to stop uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, hackings and all, but they are sometimes they are unsupported. Sometimes they are using the unsupported legacy uh, Linux kernels also. They are not secure so much, right? Next one uh, attack, uh, next one challenge is there that is security issue there, brute forcing attack and issue of default password maximum time we get such type of problem. You must be knowing about the Mirai botnet that was happened in 2016 and that used in some of the DDoS attacks. It is basically the one of the example of the issues that come with the shipping devices. That means you are uh, shipping some devices from outside or abroad, right, with default password, but you are not bothered to change those password. So, similarly, the consumers do not know and sometimes consumers uh, actually the clients do not, uh, they, know, they hesitate to change the password that whether it will be uh, finally it will be working in not. And uh, that is why the hackers take the advantage, they uh, get to know about those products and they hacks. So, there are some government reports that advise the manufacturers against selling of these IoT devices with default uh, password, but there are no such, uh, you know, guidelines, no repercussions in the uh, manufacturers to abandon this dangerous practice. So, weak credential or the login, uh, you know, leave nearly all devices in risk. And also the only reason why this Mirai uh, malware, uh, uh, you know, was so successful because of this default username and password. It could attack all the devices nearly whichever has the default username and the password. Therefore, any company that use the factory uh, default credential on their devices is placing both their businesses and their assets and the customers and their valuable information at risk, right? Third one is your IoT malware and the ransomware. About ransomware, you must be knowing, ransomware is a uh, software which really, you know, encrypts 
all the data in your system and afterwards it asks for ransom amount of money to uh, you know get back all those files. So, as the number of IoT connected devices continues to rise in the following years, so uh, will the number of malware and the ransomware also are used to exploit them. So, while the traditional ransomware relies on the in encryption to completely lock out as I have told you users out of this uh, you know different devices. So, uh, nowadays malware and the ransomware both are coming together to merge the different types of attack. The ransomware attacks uh, could potentially focus on the limited and or, or disabling device right functionality and stealing the user data and they are asking for the ransom amount for uh, you know opening those devices and giving those user data. For example, a simple IP camera is ideal in capturing uh, you know sensitive information using a wide range of locations including your home, your work office or even the local gas station. This webcam whatever you are using IP webcam or IP camera can then be locked and footage funneled uh, to an uh, you know infected uh, web address that could extract the sensitive data of your sensitive data and they can you know unlock they can uh, you know ask the ransom amount of money for unlocking those devices. So, next one is on IoT botnets. Botnet is a small software. For example, uh, the nowadays botnet we are using in cryptocurrency or in the blockchain technology, though the blockchain is much secured, but the app which are uh, used for developing this blockchain technology, they are not so much secure, right? So, this in the cryptocurrency valuations, this IoT botnets are too enticing, uh, you know, uh, they are uh, helping the attackers or the hackers uh, to uh, onto this uh, crypto craze. Now, uh, as I have told that blockchain are resistant, uh, you know, to hacking, but the apps which we are developing, those are vulnerable to the attacks. Social engineering is always being used to extract the usernames, password and the private keys and we will see it being used more often in the future to hack the blockchain based app, uh, applications. The open source cryptocurrency Monero, Monero is the open source cryptocurrency is one of the many digital currencies currently being mined with IoT devices. Some of the hackers have been repurposed the IP and video cameras to mine crypto, right? Then uh, the blockchain breaches, the IoT botnet miners and the manipulation of data integrity pose a huge risk in flooding the open crypto market. Similarly, the IoT application structures and platforms rel relying on blockchain technology, they are also in the huge risk. Next is your data security and privacy concerns from mobile, web or cloud as all your data are going to cloud. So, data privacy and security continues to be the largest issues in today's interconnected world because data is constantly being harnessed, transmitted, stored and processed by large companies, right? With the help of the IoT devices like smart TVs, speakers, lighting systems, your cameras, all this. So, automatically this data are in huge risk. Anybody can take the data and can misuse that data. So, all this user data is shared uh, between or even sold to different companies, you know, sometimes violating the rights or privacy or without your, uh, you know, uh, knowledge, those data are sold to the different various companies which are being used for different purposes. We need to set the dedicated compliance and privacy rules that detect, uh, anonymize the sensitive data uh, before storing or the disassociating IoT data payloads from the information that can be used, uh, you know, to personally identify us. And if the data is stored, then the largest challenge is in compliance with various legal and regulatory structures. So, whenever you are uh, going for, uh, you know, social media or using some data openly to your cloud or something sensitive data you are using, so you should be complied with the various legal and the regulatory structure. This is very much important. 
Uh, sometimes we, uh, you know, discuss about the large IoT attack or sometimes, uh, sometimes for example, that about the Mirai botnet or something. But sometimes small IoT attacks also that evade the detection. That, uh, uh, for example, that uh, small small attacks in your, uh, you know, uh, uh, web services or some something whatever, you know, small device you are using, one sensor you are using in your home, for example, IP camera you are using, and somebody is hacking those IP camera and takes the data from your, uh, you know, that confidential data uh, from your home, and then that can be you know, uh, given to any uh, criminal purposes and uh, your house may be, you know, chalked out by the criminals and uh, uh, it can be at risk. So, such type of, you know, small IoT attacks are also dangerous. Next is your AI and automation. As IoT devices continue to invade our everyday life, so enterprises and the businesses will eventually have to deal with hundreds or thousands of data or millions of data and the uh, on IoT devices. So, this amount of user data uh, sometimes becomes quite difficult to manage, right, for a from a data collection to the networking per perspective. So, here the AI tools and the automation are already being used, uh, you know, uh, th uh, to shift uh, uh, through massive amounts of data and could help the IoT administrator and the network security officers enforce some data specific rules and detect the anomalous data and traffic patterns. However, using this autonomous sy systems to make this autonomous, uh, you know, decisions that can affect the millions of functions uh, might be too risky because uh, it is uh, open to all, open to the network, right? So, these are just some of the uh, most pressing IoT security challenges we need to consider while we build the uh, AI based uh, app, right, uh, and on IoT in the following years. And most of them uh, revolve around uh, two things, keeping IoT uh, secure against attacks and keeping the user data secure. Uh, next is your home invasions. Perhaps one of the scariest, uh, you know, threats is that, that IoT can do the home invasion. Nowadays, IoT devices are used in a large number of homes, right, and offices, which can, uh, which has given rise to the home auto automation. The security of these, uh, you know, IoT devices is a huge matter of concern because it can expose your IP address that can pinpoint your residential address also. And this vital information, you know, uh, uh, can be sold by the hackers to the criminals or through some website and all. And if you are using the IoT devices in your security systems, then there is a possibility that they might compromise as well as leave your house at a huge risk. Next is your remote vehicle access. Apart from home invasion, hijack of your car is also one of the threat. That means smart cars uh, are on the verge of becoming reality with the help of this connected uh, IoT devices. However, due to this IoT association, uh, it also possesses a greater risk of the car hijack, right? A skilled hacker may hijack, uh, you know, by getting access of your smart car through the remote access. Last one is your untrustworthy communication and, and there are many IoT devices uh, which send messages to the network without any encryption. These are very dangerous, right? It is high time that all the companies ensure the encryption of the highest level among these, uh, you know, cloud services and the devices. To avoid this threat, the uh, smart way or the best way is to do, uh, to use this transport encryption and the standards, right? Uh, another way is to use different networks that isolates the different devices. Uh, however, a uh, lack of uh, basic security awareness among the staff as well as the state of the art cyber security solutions has made the healthcare industry a favorite target for hackers. This Mirai botnet as I have told in 2016, this has hacked mainly on the healthcare services. Uh, the, uh, among them was the, uh, you know, a notorious WannaCry also ran ransomware attack in 2016 
which affected near about 3 lakh machines uh, across the 1,50,000 uh, uh, you know, um, uh, countries. So, effective ways to build security in IoT apps. Now, till now we have uh, learnt about that what can be the challenges or the security issues. Now, what are the best effective ways to build the security? First of all, automatic application scanning. Second one is your you have to implement or use already vetted and the standard architecture. Third one is your always encrypt your sensitive data. Now, automatic application scanner, this actually they provide the instant feedback to the developer that about the security vulnerabilities. Whenever you are using some app, if you are using this application scanner, then automatically before uh, installing only it will give you the uh, you know message that this has some malware, you should not use it. So, automatic application scanner is very much important, you can load it at your uh, each, each and every mobile. Right? Some popular source code analysis tools include OWSP uh, SWAT project, IBM security app scan source as well as Veracode etc. Veracrypt or Veracode etc. Now, next is your implementation uh, or you have to implement already vetted architecture. If you are aiming to build an app or the complete mobile solution, then better you have to go to the this vetted architecture or the uh, you know standard architecture. This will require the strong and safe integration to the cloud and other on-site system. So, you will need to make sure that your server side controls are foolproof and efficient. So, uh, by using and implementing the third party architecture that have perfected their art, you can use those architecture and you can go further for building the mobile solution. Next is your that you have to always encrypt the sensitive data as I have told you since you are open to internet so you many sensitive your sensitive data are in open platform. So, those should be unreadable, those should be protect and the format uh, in that format that no one can you know hack those data. Right. Add another layer of security by building the habit of never saving your sensitive data like credit card information, credit card numbers in, in the app or the mobile device uh, itself. Uh, including this data purging algorithms into your apps which deletes the uh, you know the user sensitive data automatically goes a long way to maintain this app security. So, I have given uh, two or three uh, you know uh, some case studies for example, as I have told already that Mirai botnet in 2016, this was the largest DDoS attacks on service provider that led to huge portions of the internet going down including Twitter, including the you know Guardian, Netflix, Reddit, all those uh, you know social media uh, platforms has gone down. And this is uh, actually IoT botnet, uh, this IoT botnet was made possible by malware uh, called the Mirai and that is why the name is your Mirai botnet. Another is your Jeep uh, Cherokee hacking. Uh, it was the summer of 2015 uh, and WED reporter Andy Greenberg uh, was driving a Jeep Cherokee in uh, downtown St. Louis. And uh, uh, some suddenly what uh, he has observed that uh, blasting of cold air at the maximum setting, radio was full in full volume, the windshield wipers turned on. That time he could recognize that hackers who are 10 miles away for example, they have hacked uh, his car, right. Uh, so, uh, Fiat uh, uh, Chrysler recalled uh, this 1.4 million Jeep Cher uh, Cherokees and issued a patch closing that vulnerability. The hackable cardiac devices from St. Jude, St. Jude Medical's uh, uh, implantable cardiac devices have vulnerabilities that could allow a hacker to access the device. That means they could uh, you know deplete the battery or the administer the incorrect pacing or shocks. You can just understand that how uh, you know dangerous it is. So, the devices like uh, you know pacemakers and the other devices which are used to monitor and control the patient's heart that are attacked by the hacker. 
right and uh, the vulnerability occurred in the transmitter that reads the devices data and remotely shares it with the physicians. So, the FDA and hackers could control the device by accessing its transmitter. Those transmitter they have hacked and automatically all the you know heart monitoring devices were in control of the hackers. So, these are some uh, you know uh, case studies I have given. Uh, thank you so much. So, uh, in this video we have uh, learnt about some uh, various uh, security issues or security challenges in IoT as well as some uh, you know uh, um, uh, points that you can take care of to secure your IoT device or app as well as I have given two or three uh, use cases that have already uh, been done and how the hackers had controlled or had taken the control of the devices and which were very dangerous. Thank you so much.